Now you guys have probably heard of mystery shirts or mystery kit boxes that deliver straight to your door and you don't know what you're getting. You don't know what jersey could be inside the box. It could be anything. It is a revolution, a football trend that has really taken off in the last year or so. Now in today's video, we've got something different. The lads over at Mystery Football have sent me their very own mystery box. I've got a mystery kit inside here. I don't know what it is. It's been delivered to my door. So BCHD has got his next job offer inside here because whatever kit is in this mystery box, we're gonna be rebuilding in today's video. Now, if you guys wanna check out Mystery Football, I'll leave their links in the description below. This video is sponsored by the legends over there, so make sure you go and give them some love as you can pick your own mystery box. You can select your size. There are so many different types. You can give them the teams that you don't want, and if you're a jersey collector like myself or you just love football kits in general, these mystery kit football items and boxes are definitely for you. Now, let's get into this bad boy. I've come prepared, don't worry. I've woken up and Chosen violence today, so let's dig into this. We can do it. There we go. Get it this is off the charts again! You might have seen these guys on Buffy Boy's channel or Jared H. Sheet has also done a similar video, but here you go. I mean, it's a bit better than bruised. It's come all the way, halfway across the globe. Let's find out together, shall we? Actually, no. I'll let you guys have the first look. Is that going to give anything away? I've closed my eyes. I don't know if that's given anything away, but let's have a look. Oh, hello. Hello. By a Leverkusen. Don't mind if I do. If you've seen my BCHD Junior Career Simulation, my 100k special, you'll know that By a Leverkusen was one of the clubs I made myself a legend at. The German outfit. There you go. That's their home number this season. And we've only gone and pulled it from the lads over at Mystery Football. I am a very big fan of that. Nice blacked out jersey. No number at the back, unfortunately. However, this adds to my second By a Leverkusen jersey in my collection. I whip this bad boy on. Sorry, Mr. Beast, you're coming off. Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. Dude, I don't mind that. That actually suits me. That, that's actually a ping jersey, to be fair. I'm not going to give you the whole entire backstory on this Bayer Leverkusen jersey. That's a video for the second channel in itself. As you can see here, I think it's a 14-15 Bayer Leverkusen jersey. The number 10 at the back, it's got Hakan Chanelogu. Once he made the move over from Schalke, it's a long sleeve. Like the little box as well. Got the imprint, like a little pizza box. Trust me, I've seen a fair few in my time. Thanks once again over to the lads at Mystery Football. It has been a pleasure. Hopefully these lads are European champions with Sir BCHD at their home. Let's find out. And there he is, Sir BCHD, decked out in his brand new Bayer Leverkusen gear. We're holding up the exact shirt I've gotten in the mystery box, except for the BCHD one at the back. But hey, maybe Mystery Football can sort me out for next time. Only a couple weeks back, I did the German-only Schalke rebuild. Now we're back in the Bundesliga here in Germany. Let's take a look at the starting 11. We've got Euro 2020 Golden Boot winner Patrick Schick. Definitely one of the strikers of the tournament in my book. The Czech Republican leading the line up top. Then we have this interesting kind of formation, this 3-4-2-1, as Leon Bailey and Amiri for the time being playing as inverted wingers. We've got Florian Wirtz, the wonder boy, the poster boy of German football right now. Some decent wonder kids like Ezekiel Palacios, Musa Diaby. At the back, we've got the likes of these two titans, Tap Sopper and Tar. There are promising prospects in every department, and on the reserves, it is no different with the likes of Frimpong. I don't know when this guy moved to Bayer Leverkusen, I must have missed this one. Paulinho, Damari, Gray, and ex career mode wonder kid Yedvai. With a team that's going to grow into the future, I think I'll believe in the Leverkusen philosophy. I might just keep this formation. It's a team that's going to develop and grow into the future as we can make some changes this season, bring in a couple of brand new improvements to bolster the team. We've been gifted about 45 million pounds to spend, so nothing too crazy. Maybe we'll bump it up to 50 if we're in a good mood. But as you look at the kit up close and personal in game, looks as good if not better in real life. We're trying to switch the content up before the launch of FIFA for 22 so if you go on to enjoy make sure to drop a like down below hit subscribe turn on the notifications for more of this type of content arriving in your sub boxes and enough messing about let's get into the transfers i'm proud to announce our very first signing of the mystery kit rebuild era right here for by leverkusen we've picked up a pedro de la vega for 10.6 million pounds the argentine wonder kid has been a favorite in career mode since fifa 20 in real life he's actually linked to a move to genoa of all teams however we've acquired the attacking Argentine to future-proof this squad and to replace the likes of an aging 30-year-old Karim Bellarabi. Ever since Kai Havertz, the golden boy of Leverkusen, has departed the Bayer Arena, there has been a massive hole to fill as someone needs to fill the boots of the German camp and that is going to be Dominic Sabozlai. We've spent £10.9 million on the promising Hungarian in a swap deal offer that involves Karim Bellarabi. He'll be headed the other way to RB Leipzig as we weaken our fellow Bundesliga opponents. I think this is a stunning piece of business. When 
When we were introducing this team, I was raving about the current defense. However, I think there is one more puzzle piece in order to complete the picture, and that's another young up-and-coming center back. It is Wesley Fofana from Leicester City. The Frenchman has really proven his worth in the Premier League, and he could be a brilliant signing. The Bundesliga providing him the perfect place to grow and develop on a permanent basis. That cost us 24.6 million pounds, plus the Austrian involved in the swap deal, Alexander Dragovic. It's our first player departure of the video, and it's going to be another Austrian, Julian Baumgartlinger. The 32-year-old central midfielder has been sold to Real Sociedad for 8.9 million pounds. With Patrick Schick firing on all cylinders and an aging Argentine striker, I know it just sounds like I hate old people, but we've got Lucas Alario signing for Athletic Bilbao, the club who have just completely abandoned their Basque transfer policy. I've got to admit 27 is an old, but he's not the kind of striker I want hanging around and taking up the wage bill for 12.3 million pounds. He'll be departing to Spain, and now we might be on the hunt for a brand new backup number nine. I don't usually use these guys in rebuilds, but the homegrown talent, Benjamin Lehmann, it's a famous German name. I think I'm going to have to promote him to the first team, whether he becomes a CDM or center back. He could be a brilliant stalwart in the back three. Already with a five-star weak foot, four-star skill moves, six foot three, 72 to 94 potential. What's not to love about this guy? With 99 jumping, 97 aggression, he's already displaying some world-class attributes. I've got that special feeling about this guy. He's got potential to be special. At 17 years of age, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet and convert him into a center back. Under Sir BCHD's guidance, the future looks very promising here at Bayer Leverkusen. It's our second outright player departure of the window. It's a left back, Wendell, the Brazilian, who was a former career mode wonder kid back in the day. I remember FIFA 15. He was a pretty solid purchase. However, times have changed. His career never really took off the ground as Aston Villa have acquired him for 6.7 million pounds considering our formation doesn't even use wing backs. He's a very needed sale that we've cashed in on. Now, after watching this man absolutely tear up the Copa America this summer, I had to go and purchase him in a video. It is Luis Diaz from Colombia on FC Porto's books. I know this team has got a lot of wingers, so we might be converting him into a different attacking position. However, we've negotiated a swap deal for the 23-year-old, 27.1 million pounds, plus Daily Sink Graven, another left back who we've decided to ship out. He'll never get any game time, so that is a deal I'm well and truly accepting. Luis Diaz, welcome to the Bundesliga, amigo. If he even brings just half of the skills that he displayed in the Copa America, this should be a very successful signing, our brand new number 15. Now, this signing is just an excuse to use up the rest of the transfer budget. I've gone for a bit of a marketing move. I've noticed whenever young American talents move on over to the big European leagues, there is so much hype around them and it just brings a different audience into the club. So I've decided to go for an unpoached American one to get it. Gianluca Buzio. Arriving from Sporting Kansas City, we activated his 4.45 million pound release clause and just like that, he is a brand new Leverkusen player. It's been a bit of a dry period and when it comes to transfers, however, we have finally got some news to report on with Weiser. The German right back slash right mid will be heading off to Crystal Palace for a two year loan deal. In a nutshell, that has been our summer transfer window for season one, spending 77.65 million pounds with a total profit of 27.9 million. We've definitely gone shopping for the future, which will help us out long term. Fingers crossed, Sir BCHD has got a master plan in the works. Here is the current starting 11 and how it's looking. Our depth and attack and prowess off the bench is actually insane. However, I don't think we're going to be challenging for the Bundesliga title. However, Champions League qualification is definitely a must this season. Oh, this is what you love to see. We've seen to the end of season one and we've got two cup finals awaiting us. A DFB puck out battle in the capital against Dortmund and another German opposition position this time in the Europa League final only a couple days later. We could secure our first piece of silverware as Bayer Leverkusen manager and no it's a heartbreaking 2-1 loss. Reese and Delaney with the two daggers as Leon Bailey got the 43rd minute equaliser. It wasn't our day. However with the Europa League final is this going to mean whether or not we get Champions League football for next season? Let's check the Bundesliga table. Okay that's better. We finish in third. No need to stress about winning the Europa League as we're coming up against second place RB Leipzig. Bayer Bayern Munich still levels clear of the rest. Our squad depth definitely helped us out here. We travelled pretty comfortably in terms of the Europa League. Breezing past opponents left, right and centre. 3-0, 4-0, 4-2 against Napoli, which was a massive result. And then in the semis, we came up against Levante. Breezed them aside and it set up an all-German encounter for the final. I'm going to keep things how they are. One piece of silverware, let alone two, is going to be absolutely massive. Nonetheless, it's a battle of the 3-4-2-1 formations. 
RB Leipzig are pulling up with their ballers as well. So this one is definitely going to be a tight affair on the European stage. And it's a five-goal thriller in extra time. Danny Olmo with an 113th minute. That is just heartbreaking stuff as we lose two finals in one week. It's heartbreaking that we couldn't even end the season with one piece of silverware from two finals. Definitely a tough one to take on the chest. It's going to hurt for a while, but onwards and upwards to season two. This young team's got a lot to learn, and that has definitely been a character building end to the season as we have Patrick Schick. We trusted him after his Euro 2020 performances in real life, getting the golden boot, and he's only gone and gotten the golden boot for Leverkusen here in season one. 27 goals and seven assists for the Czech Republican. I'm glad I kept him in the squad. Growing up a plus four, he is now our out and out talisman to lead the line. And right behind him is our brand new summer signing, the Colombian, providing a bit of South American flair. It is Luis Diaz. 20 goal contributions for the 24 year old. He has found no issues whatsoever sliding into our starting 11 now at an 82 overall. Moussa Diaby, the French wonder kid with 11 goals and five assists. Ezequiel Palacios from the midfield. He has showcased some early leadership qualities to steal the armband from an aging Charles Aranguiz, the Chilean midfielder. The current captain, we might keep him in the side for just one more season. Six goals and five assists for him. Dominic Saboslai with a brilliant first campaign to get off the ground running. Six goals and six assists. Leon Bailey from the left hand side with six goals and one. And a brand new summer signing as well. Pedro De La Vega off the bench with six goals and three. We've been lucky enough to witness some amazing growth in terms of their overall stat boosts everywhere you look. It has been such a promising campaign. No silverware to show for. However, the future is definitely looking bright as our highest rated asset right now, Edmund Tapsopper, the African defender valued at 60.5 million pounds. As you can tell, we're definitely on the right track. The mystery kid arriving at my doorstep's probably been the best thing to happen to this club. Let's see if we can replicate that same magic as we head on into season two. We purchased a Copa America baller in season one. Now we're going over to a Copa America winner. This time the Argentine Rodrigo de Paul. How he stayed at Udinese for this long, I'll never know. The midfielder who has recently made the move to Atletico Madrid in real life, well deserved. We've gone ahead and picked him up for 21.1 million pounds and involved Karim Derab Derambay. Derambay. I don't even know. My tongue gets tired every time I try to say that guy's name. But finally, switching allegiances to Udinese whilst we received the dynamic Argentine in his prime. Now, our first player sale of season two, it is going to be the Finnish striker moving to Stuttgart for 3.2 million pounds. The 26-year-old Joel Ponjanpalo. We've got two player sales in a row here. Former Manchester United Youth Academy player Timothy Fosu Mensa has had his release clause activated from Wolfsburg for 11.4 million pounds. The Dutchman will be making the switch to fellow Bundesliga outfit and it's another player who we're just not going to use because we don't use wingbacks in this formation. I've had a tendency so far throughout this rebuild to sign players who have recently made a move in real life and this signing is no different with Ibrahim Akinate. We've had to pay up 48.1 million pounds. This time not arriving from Liverpool, the team he's going to in real life. It is Olympic Lyon for the 22-year-old French centre-back. The former RB Leipzig player is going to be returning back to the Bundesliga. And I thought besides our homegrown talent, we really don't have any big backup centre-backs. Now securing a backup striker that is going to be ready to come off the bench this season was one of our main priorities in this transfer window. And here in season two, we have poached the Argentine yet another Copa America winner. Just like Rodrigo de Paul, it is Nicolas Gonzalez. The South American arrives from Stuttgart, fellow Bundesliga club, for 32.5 million pounds. He's got a game face, which is also a plus, but he is versatile, can also be deployed on the left-hand side. And again, another one of these players who have recently made a move in real life. He's going to be joining Fiorentina for the start of the 21-22 season. Now, I was going to use the rest of our transfer budget to strengthen other areas of the squad, but then I realized, you know, we haven't even signed the goalkeeper yet, two seasons in. And the reason why the transfer fee is so specific is because because we've emptied every single penny out of the transfer budget to sign the Italian Stallion. First one of the video, Alex Meret in between the sticks. The third choice Italian for the national team, he will be a backup for Haradecki in these first few seasons, but considering the finish shot stopper isn't getting any younger, he potentially could overtake him, but we might be a couple of years away from that. Thankfully, we now have invested in a competent backup just in case anything happens to our number one. The clearance sale and departure of Deadwood continues as Tinyed Vaj the Crow Croatian centre-back is going to move to Aston Villa. They just love picking up all our defenders we don't want for 7.5 million pounds. He is going to be moving to the Premier League. And for the first time, I can proudly announce our Champions League group. We have been drawn into Group A alongside Liverpool, Slavia Praha and FC Copenhagen. So we should be competing with Liverpool.
Liverpool for first place. If all goes well, we can get our lucky stars. We haven't been situated in a group of death, so at least that's a positive. Now, that is going to draw the curtain on one of our most highly spent or most expensive transfer windows. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. Just an exuberant amount of money, and we focused on quality this season. Let's move on to season two, and hopefully this is enough to get our hands on some silverware. Here is how the current lineup is looking. Unfortunately, Bailey has submitted a transfer request, so we might need someone to fill into that spot. So Bosline, Flotty and Verta contenders. We've shifted Diaz out to a right midfielder. Rodrigo de Paul will be playing that center mid slash center forward role. We've still got Will and E leading the line. Our back three is looking like the Great Wall of China. I think this has got to be one of the most scintillating German projects yet. In a season where we've thought we've progressed this team so much in terms of the transfers, improvements, and the overall squad, we finished pretty much in the exact same spot we did in season one. Actually below what we did. We got one less point with 69, and we also finished in fourth. Not the best considering we wanted to be up there in the race for the title. However, Bayern become the champions yet again. Dortmund finishing runners-up. Not the ideal scenario, but hey, Champions League football for season three. Over in the DFB Pokal, it was Borussia Mönchengladbach to win that one out. A 2-0 win over Wolfsburg as we were eliminated to the winners 2-1 in the semi-finals. Things aren't looking good, people, as we switch on over to the Champions League. What? No. How? How is this even possible? What kind of black magic have we conjured up here? Two seasons in, how incomplete this team is. We somehow finished on top against the group with Liverpool to face FC Porto. Diaz's former team who we won 5-0 on aggregate over. We knocked out Atletico Madrid 2-2 on away goals. A rule that doesn't exist anymore after this season. So this is the last time we're going to be seeing this in action in FIFA. And a 4-2 win on aggregate against Sevilla. Liverpool knocked out Inter on away goals in a 0-0 clash. And there we go. We progressed through and earned our ticket to the big dance despite failing at all our domestic competitions. It's a miracle run to the Champions League final, but I still feel like this team has got so much more to grow. It's not an incomplete team, but they've just got a couple more seasons until they hit their prime. Plentiful young talent, a lot of inexperience, maybe the experience and wisdom of an older player like Rodrigo de Paul, Aranguiz, Haradeki in between the sticks. Did the older players help out in this? The Chilean captain now presented with the opportunity to lift up Big E's trophy tonight in this European battle, where we're just killing it continentally, but not so much domestically. Musa Diaby, one of the most overpowered wonder kids in career mode. If you watch my 100k special, like I mentioned at the beginning, this Frenchman completely killing it. Probably one of his best career decisions to move away from PSG as he scored 25 goals on 5 assists. The 22 year old now one of our best players at an 88 overall rating and it's Patrick Schick following up from his brilliant campaign last time out. Will and E couldn't exactly get the golden boot but he still manages the double figures. 28 goal contributions for the Czech Republic and entering his prime. The Jamaican Leon Bailey. I decided to keep him locked down just for another season. 9 goals and 9 assists. Luis Diaz now a right midfielder. 8 goals and six assists for the Colombian and Rodrigo de Paul our brand new acquisition in season two he has actually fitted in perfectly being our leading assist maker the most creative player in this squad with 14 assists eight goals 26 goal contributions 22 goal contributions from the Argentine Nicolas Gonzalez off the bench with six goals I've just realized we've gotten a couple of Argentinian guns in this squad and Ezequiel Palacios is no exception five goals and eight assists from the center of the park my plans for Florian Verts was to take over that left wing spot Liam Bailey was eventually going to leave behind as the German this season off the bench scored four goals and two assists. Wesley Fafana from the back with three goals and the captain who I was thinking about selling or involving in a swap deal. Three goals and eight assists for the Chilean Aranguiz. He's even grown a plus one this season. The 33 year old insane stuff and I can't believe we're already thinking about replacing this guy. Our finish shot stopper in between the sticks Lucas Haradecki with two assists and 20 clean sheets. The development plans and dynamic potential has definitely done its job. He is our highest Shredder player Musa Diaby now tap stopper and Luis Diaz are in second place tied. It feels strange. I've got like imposter syndrome thinking how did we get to a Champions League final with no 90 rated players? It's definitely been a miracle Champions League run with our highest valued player. Now it's Musa Diaby worth 109 million pounds on the transfer market and second is another Frenchman. His fellow countryman Wesley Fofana at 91.5. Thanks to the simulation gods we've somehow frauded our way into this final. Here are how the teams are lining up at Old Trafford with Reversing Liverpool in England. How are we going to fare up against Jurgen Klopp's men? Let's find out. Scenes you love to see. The fans are out in their numbers. And what a night it is for the Leverkusen faithful. I feel like these lads, even though they're fighting for that tonight, they deserve another year to battle it out in Germany. And the road to the final for both teams was nothing short of remarkable. I'm glad Will and E showed up. Let's hope he's ready to score goals and bang him in just like he did in Europe.
Euro 2020. And my goodness, the kit looks silky in game compared to the Liverpool kit. Just leagues above it. Now, let's get this show on the road. Will and E will get us kicked off. Palacios out wide to our MVP this season, Diaby. Let's see what he's got tonight. As Alexander Arnold blocks that, we'll go again. Palacios ball over the top, and already we have a danger. And no, 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 no. And on over the top to Roberto Firmino, we've got Harry Wilson with a lovely switch of play. And it couldn't keep out Mane right here. We've got the Senegalese winger all of a sudden. A big block coming in from our defender. And Ranguiz, the captain, will slow down the play. Rodrigo to poor Schick. Why? Oh, Mane's in here. We've left him all alone. And the Senegalese winger. We have Fafana chasing back. The Frenchman headers away, but it's at the feet of Thiago. A little bicycle kick cross. Harry Wilson, but Palacios read it like a book. And now Diaby is away. Leon Bailey can set him through. And look at the Frenchman go with his blistering pace. Is he going to outpace Virgil van Dijk? I don't think so. But he'll find some support in the middle. He gives it off to Palacios. Now Leon Bailey, the man who submitted a transfer request, had an attempt, but Allison saw it all the way. Thiago now moves the ball on over to Firmino. And it's Liverpool using the ball really nicely here. And it's the play. Oh, don't tell me that's a penalty. That is not a penalty. It's referee, man. I hate these types of penalties they give in game. It's the softest thing you'll ever see. The diver seller is at it again. And the Egyptian wins the penalty. But can Haradeki keep it out? Let's find out. The number 11. Where's he going? I think he's going left. Oh, and he goes right. He's been anchored it. Oh, I thought it came off the post. <laughs> All right, then. Fine, Liverpool. You get your easy shot. You get your penalty to break the deadlock. And now he's going ahead and celebrating in front of our fans. This is a violation. The audacity to claim that as a penalty. And the audacity to Penenka nearly hit the post and missed. But Haradeki completely got sent the wrong way and went 1-0 down. Diaby making the run. Why doesn't Leon Bailey pick him out? A lovely little backheel scorpion kick from Schick to keep the play alive. And possession, it still remains here. Liverpool's defense all of a sudden opens up and Leon Bailey throwing goal deflection and we get the instant equalizer. It is a flashback to reality for Liverpool and the Jamaican who made that transfer request. I bet he's having second thoughts now, scoring a Champions League final goal. Insane stuff here at Old Trafford as our number nine never gave up and we get one, uh, an easy road back into this game. Rodrigo de Paul with the through ball. Liverpool's defense in sixes and sevens and it perfectly recognizes shade and deflected into the path of his lethal left foot. We're back on level terms, level pegging at the moment, but Liverpool still remaining a threat and not going to stand down that easily. Roberto Firmino completely fools Canate and here we've got Roberto Firmino again and they've made their way through. It's Yota, but it's a brilliant tackle from Fofana who keeps him out. Don't be claiming that as a penalty, Jurgen Klopp. You're out of your mind if that's a penalty. And now we just can't get out of our own half. Sadio Mane bolstering down this left-hand side with a buccaneering run. It's deflected. And again, it's a big block from Tapsopa. A deflection. Haradeki punch it away. And it's all out chaos here at Old Trafford. After an exhilarating drama-packed field first half, the first 45 comes to a close and we finally get to take a breather. No. Oh, that's a dead giveaway. It's a dead giveaway in Sadio Mane. Right there. If you give it to Liverpool a chance like that, they will take it and capitalize 10 times out of 10. A disastrous way to kick off this second half. A lapse of concentration. Not a situation you want to be in. Haradeki couldn't catch a cold. <laughs> what? Jürgen Klopp's punt? Jürgen Klopp's shadow boxing on the sideline. Who who programmed that into the game? I just feel violated. Jürgen Klopp trying to bloody shadow box her BCHD on the sidelines. Maybe we should just forget all this Champions League rigmarole and start our own boxing event. Fofana finds Luis Diaz who gets Aranguiz in an abundance of space. And on the right hand side we've stretched Liverpool an early ball inside and the chance. Alisson was there. And again it's been saved. Sheik with the brilliant strike. It's a flash shot from him, but it's way off target. And that could have been our way back into the game. Brilliant tackle at Anguiz. They're tripping our defenders off the ball. Referee, are you going to sort something about this beautiful tackle, Luis Diaz? Colombian wins it back fairly. No soft penalty there. Rodrigo to Paul. Lovely little back heel. And it's the ball over the top for the Argentine. He's found his way through, but where's his support? The teammates making a run in. And here we go. Patrick Schick from the left foot bomb. And it's fell straight to Palacios. But it's another chance ruined off target from the Argentine. Not what we wanted. Look at it. At Anguis tackles, but it goes straight back to them. Everything's falling to them. And it seems like Liverpool playing freely right now. And Svanberg off the bench to get the third and potential winner. All right, it's our first change of the match. Rodrigo de Paul coming off for his fellow Argentine, Gonzalez. We need a bit of 
attacking pace and power up front. Oh, oh, they're playing with fire here. And all of a sudden, we get the perfect chance. Leon Bailey to get us back into the game off the post. And it's just not going to be our night, is it? Can't be bothered anymore. No, I'm not, not having this. I'm not having this. Jurgen Klopp has shadow boxes on the sideline. We get put a fourth after so many good chances created. It's just not falling our way tonight. The referee brings it to an end after season two. We fail in the Champions League final. The storyline, or the scoreline, I should say, doesn't begin to tell the story of how the game actually went. Unfortunately, the lads just for second best tonight, especially in that second half. A dodgy penalty and a couple of boxing punches later. And we fall to Liverpool 4-1. I always said whether we came home with the trophy or not, we're going to give these lads another season. Despite the result, we're going into season three with our heads held high. Still without a piece of silverware to our name. Three finals losses. Surely the resurgence is on. We can come back and at least win something during our third campaign. We're opening up season three with a banger. Starting off with his purchase of a Declan Rice from PSG. For £58 million, our brand new midfielder will be replacing the captain, the aging Chelsea. And Aranguiz. I said we'd give him one more year. We've done exactly that. He nearly took us to glory, but it's time to get in someone that's really going to solidify and dominate the midfield. It's a flat out transfer, and for someone which I thought in the Euro final, he's a big game player. In the first half, I thought he completely dominated the middle of the park. Definitely is a big presence, has got strength, and is exactly the kind of hard man we need if we want to progress any further with this team. We are well and truly locked and loaded. We're focused solely on getting brand new quality into the club over quantity and this time we have splurged 60 million pounds for the Portuguese striker Andre Silva. The 26 year old is about to enter his prime and if you saw the Champions League final highlights you know that Patrick Schick squandered a couple of big opportunities. We need someone who has that instinct who can find the back of the net with their eyes closed and I believe for this guy a lot of things have gone wrong in his career. This could be the right step. A new seasons means new recruits but it doesn't mean that players aren't going to be sold and that's exactly the case here for Nadiem Amiri. Just a German and Cam, who's quite promising, but we never really utilized in this team or in this formation. He was always second in the pecking order as the German joins Thomas Tuchel over at Chelsea. We've been holding a transfer request at Leon Bailey hostage for a couple of seasons now, and I've decided to finally get a replacement. He's running down to the end of his contract this year, and the Jamaican is going to find a new home at Wolverhampton Wanderers as we found his replacement or just a backup left winger, Pedro Neto. I don't think I've ever really signed this guy in career mode. I'm breaking a lot of trends in this video. It's basically a straight swap. We've got 100k in the deal. I don't know why I added on the extra money, but it's a straight swap between these two. Hopefully he enjoys life in the Premier League and Pedro Neto can be a brand new sparkling addition. All I'm hoping for is that he just doesn't submit a transfer request. Just be a peaceful player. And what is going to be our fourth and final signing? You might be thinking, not another midfielder. No, not again. But in classic serve ECHD fashion, I've changed my mind. We're going for the same three at the back formation, but this time it's a three-man midfield. So we need a brand new first team quality starting 11 player and that is Marcel Sabitza, the Austrian arriving from Milan for 54.1 million pounds, plus our former captain Aranguiz. I thought it was the perfect way to transition old talent and bring in a new baller in his prime. I know he's a hard-working, creative midfielder just like Declan Rice is, and he can literally play anywhere in midfield. The versatility on him is stupendous, and that's what I love about him. Centre mid, CDM, and Cam, our brand new number 31, will slot straight into the midfield as we've opted for a 3-1-4-2 formation. We've got Rice to CDM, Palacios and Sabitzer playing alongside him and a two-man strike force with Patrick Schick and Andre Silva. Now a couple of first-team regulars are out on international duty but we've got our business done early. This is the team we're going to be rocking this season. A couple of new position change updates. We've converted Paulinho into a fourth choice striker and Florian Verts to be a left winger. Other than that, let's get ready to tackle season three head on. What a whirlwind it's been so far. To cap off season three, we finished in third. Yet again qualifying for the Champions League, but not having enough to qualify or, or just compete for the top spot. That goes to Dortmund this year. BVB get their title charge back on, and it's just another routine top four battle, as we were nowhere to be seen in the DFB Pokal, yet again being eliminated in the semi-finals, this time 2-1 to Wolfsburg. Over in the Champions League, it was an undefeated run from the boys, continentally. Something about the Champions League just brings out their best abilities, beating the likes of, okay, it wasn't the toughest of groups, but Dinamo Zagreb, Olympic Leon, and Shakhtar Dan of Group D. And in the round of 16, they face Atletico Madrid, defeating them a 3-2 on aggregate. In here, the quarterfinals, they took down Bayern 
3-2, and then again, oh, not again 3-2, it was 5-2 this time against Lazio in the semis, and that's granted them access to the Champions League final again, two seasons in a row, it's another miracle run, and this time, they're up against PSG, Moneyball FC, don't do this to me again, two years in a row, I can't be having Champions League heartbreakers, Palacios and Canate will be out for the final, you know what, I'm gonna switch it up for this one, it's a different rebuild, it's a bit of a different video, we've gone against the usual formula, I can't do heartbreak two years in a row, or two Champions League finals in a row for that matter. So, we're just going to quick sim this one and let the FIFA gods decide it. The simulation gods have gotten us the 2-0 victory over PSG. It was a Luis Diaz third minute opener, and then Gonzalez to get the second to secure it. I can't scroll up again for some reason, but finally, Sir BCHT's Bayer Leverkusen are Champions League heroes, and they are crowned European champions of the world. Was it the change of formation, the change of system? I'm not quite sure, as we picked up quite a few injuries from it. Let's check in on the team and let's just take a look and appreciate our European champions right here. The top goal scorer. Okay, I like this. A lot of the goals are spread out, so four players got double figures. You don't usually see that. However, this Bayer squad is built different as Patrick Schick comes out again. The Czech with 19 goals and three assists. 22 goal contributions from the striker. We got Luis Diaz. Scored the opener in the UCL final with 16 goals and 13 assists. He becomes one of two players to get double figures in both departments and that is him and Musa Diaby on the left hand side. Two players playing on the attack and flank. 16 goals and 12 assists for the Frenchman. We've got our brand new striker acquisition this season. I'm glad it paid off. The money was worth it. Down to the last set for Andre Silva. 16 goals and 2 assists for him. Marcel Serbitze, yet another summer introduction. His first season, not his first season playing in Germany, but his first season playing for Leverkusen. 7 goals and 8 assists for the Austrian. Gonzalez scored 1 goal in the Champions League and that was in the most important game in the final. 6 goals and 1 assist for the Argentine in 34 appearances and the box-to-box -box midfielder Palacios couldn't get his game time unfortunately was injured for the final but this season scored six times and got himself five assists Rodrigo de Paul from midfield with five goals and seven Damari Gray out of all players off the bench with three goals and four appearances I think the captaincy was just automatically gifted to Declan Rice as he got himself two goals and two assists this season a whopping 22 clean sheets for our finished goalkeeper Lucas Hadideki with one of the seasons of his life still growing at a ripe 33 years of age what a man mountain in between the sticks as our highest rated assets. Actually, it comes pretty close. At the end of the day, Luis Diaz finishes on top with a plus three this season, now hitting the 90s. This is more like it. 117.5 million pounds. We've got Wesley Fafana nearly reaching that world's best potential. 115.5 and then Musa Diaby a close third at 115 mil. And there you go. Luis Diaz goes down as one of the only players in this team to reach a 90 overall. He's classified as one of the world's best and has brought over his Colombian flair. He's Copa America prowess here in Germany. This team has showcased they can provide modern day footballing miracles and they know how to grind out results, play attractive attacking football and it's all thanks to the mystery box for allowing us to do this type of video. If you want to see more content like this involving, you know, real world uh, merchandise or jerseys, let me know down in the comments below because I definitely do have more plans for this kind of stuff in the future. As always, if you did go on to enjoy, drop it a like down below, hit subscribe, turn on the notifications, follow all my socials. As always, I've been Sir BTHD. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.